old. I'm a professional fighter. We're getting ready for a world title shot in Madison Square Garden March 16th against John Duddy. You're watching me, Anthony Bonsante, straight up on FSN North. Don't get careless when you break now. You have your eyes on them. Right back to the jab. Stick the jab. Piece of cake. That's what you want. Okay. I got a little road rash right here. Box real well today. Box real well. I got married when I was 20 years old to my high school sweetheart Tanya. And we will graduate high school together. We were married for about eight years, got divorced when I was 30. I've got two great kids. I've got a 13-year-old daughter, Brittany. I've got a nine-year-old son, Derek. I was a single dad for about six years. Um, very, very tough. And actually, when I got divorced, it probably made me a better dad because I concentrated more on my relationship with my daughter and my son, the closeness, the bond that we had. Derek almost hit me right in the he head. Said it's your own dad. Jerk. G threw the boots, almost hit me right in the freaking head. He told me so. I did tell him, but I didn't tell you to aim him at my head. I didn't mean to. They made it out on the contender as a single dad, where in reality, my wife, or my ex-wife, took care of the kids the whole time I was gone. You know, but that's the spin they took on it, is that I was a single dad working third shift, raising a family. I'm very fortunate, very lucky that she granted me a second chance. We were 16 years old, and that's when we started dating. So we dated all through high school. Went all through high school as a couple, and then we got married fairly young at 20 years old. We did have some rough times, obviously. We got divorced when we were 29, 30 years old. We've been divorced for about six years, mm -hmm. um, went our separate ways, but we always felt that it was to keep the kids the highest priority. Um, she's a great mother. She had the kids most of the time because of my job, but I'd get the kids on the weekends. And she was pretty liberal as far as letting me come over whenever I wanted her to see the kids. After six years had gone by, we just started hanging out together and realizing that we still had feelings for each other. And, and I finally grew up and I know what's important to me now, and that's my wife and my two kids. And I want to make it up to her and let her know the, how important she is to me for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, you got a big greenie. <laughs> right now, I mean, my family life is great. Just hurry up, that way we can take her and go from to Gigi tonight and go right from there. So hurry up. So what's your plan with Jeremy tonight, Derek? He's going to stop over after the... So he is going to the dance. And you're Jeremy not... is. Okay. It's not DJ night, it's DJ. DJ night. There it is. <laughs> Derek loves the way I dance, no. don't you, buddy? I keep telling my dad I want a box, I want a box, and um, he says, well, when are you going to do that? And I said, well, I can't right now, but after you're done, will you be my coach? And he says, sure. And then a couple days ago, me and my brother were sparring in the living room. <laughs> I knew I still loved her, and she knew she still loved me, and we re got re-engaged this past Christmas. and. Yep, planning on getting married in next February. <laughs> We're going down south to get married, so hopefully on the beach with the kids. Derek's going to be my best man, and Brittany's going to be the maid of honor since they got to miss out on the first one, and it wasn't their fault mom and dad got divorced in the first place, but we're going to make them a part of the uh, wedding party. So. Tanya was obviously a great mother, a great wife, and uh, it just took me a little extra time to grow up, and finally I grew up and realized what was important to me, and that was the first love of my life, and that was Tanya, and I'm... Very, very fortunate and lucky that she was able to give me a second chance because I don't know where I'd be if she didn't. It's been busy so far this morning. I've had to do a lot of running around trying to get paperwork ready for the fight. Um, I tried to run around looking for a sled for my son. Nobody has sleds anywhere, but he's got a sledding party today. Luckily, we had a backup. Normally I work a full-time job. Fortunately I got a leave of absence from work and now it seems like even though I have a leave of absence from work and I should have all this time on my hands, I don't because I'm working out three times a day, I'm running errands, um, I got to make sure I'm doing the right things as far as boxing is concerned. That was the whole point of taking the leave of absence. Right now it's 10 to 11. I'm heading to Gold's Gym to work out with uh, my personal trainer Noe Abrams. 
it's an hour long session. I usually meet with her three days a week. Um, she's helped me with my core, my balance, um, conditioning and this and that. Now it's when the fun begins. Let's start with that. He doesn't stop until you tell him. So that's fun, you know. I can, uh, I always say I can throw him down the stairs and he lands on his feet. You know, I can give him anything and he'll take it. It's fun. He's very stable, very stable. What he used to do is he had more time off between his fights, and so he would get really fat between his fights and totally out of shape. So now the fights are, you know, they're, uh, there's less time in between, and so he can just, uh, he can stay at his same, uh, you know, fitness level. And now it's, he's at his peak. He's absolutely at his peak. Feel good, buddy? Yeah. All right. That's good. You look really vascular. Because I'm getting lean. I'm a fighting machine. Yeah? Are you eating right? Yeah. Pasta, you... bread, donuts. Beer? I told you, beer. You got to have some beer in Cruise light, yeah. Yeah. No, That's I mean, good. chicken, tuna, broccoli, cauliflower, brown rice. Okay. All this stuff I'm supposed to be eating. So. Okay. All right, good. On the floor. Forearms, please. So here we work on his core and shoulder girdle stability. So tap my arm. Be nice. I love working with him. I absolutely love it. He gives me more crap than any client I've ever had. Over here. Over here. Got it over here. You're so mean to me. I hate you. And I keep trying to come up with new ways to just kill him. <laughs> and that's so much fun. Good. Don't you love it? Good. Last time through, buddy. Clean it up. Feel good? Am I supposed to answer honestly? No. Okay. Yeah, feels great. Okay. Today, that's, that's it, it for gold. Yeah. Now we go home and relax for about 30 minutes and then go to boxing practice. That is it. It's kind of sad. She did a great job. I'm very fortunate to have Noe. She did a wonderful job. So. That's fine. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. We're going to do it too. So, thank you. If you don't win, I'll kill you. Don't worry, I'm gonna win. Okay, good. We're 10 days away from the fight. Um, right now, as of Tuesday. Uh, today, we're just gonna spar again. Do you would you like three and one or three and 30? Three and 30? Greased up so the punches slip off me. So I'm gonna hit too bad. I'm gonna get this to you before I flip it. <laughs> Going in with Willie the Gladiator Gibb. He's a guy that's been kicking my ass for the past week. Ain't that right, Willie? Oh, I'm kicking my ass. I got into boxing when I was 10 years old. I grew up in Cross Ranch, Minnesota. The nearest Golden Gloves program was Brainerd, which was about 15 miles west of us. And I've got relatives that have boxed in the past. And I asked my mother, who was a single mom at the time, raising me and my brother, if I could join boxing. Obviously, she said, no way in hell. But um, after convincing her that just let me try it, let me see what it offers me, she let me. I enjoyed it. It gave you discipline. It gave you uh, self-respect. And it showed you the respect for others. You don't carry your fists out of the ring. I've never been in a street fight, never will. I think I was 14, I got injured, and my mom told me to quit, and I had quit for like two years, and I wrote her a heartfelt letter and said, why you, why you not let me fight? That's my dream, I wanna win a world title, and I will win a world title. And she started crying, and she let me fight again. And um, ever since then, it, I won five Upper Midwest titles. I went to the National Golden Gloves Finals in 1991, lost by one point to Ross Thompson. And then I retired. I, uh, I got married when I was 21. I went to college for education, and I took about four years off, and then I started seeing all these guys on ESPN fighting the pros that I've beaten. So I called up Bill Kane, a uh, world-renowned trainer here in Minneapolis, and asked him if he would train me. He was retired from boxing at the time. He trained greats like Glenn and Del Flanagan. He trained Danny Schomer. He trained um, Anthony Stevens. My old coach, Tommy Heron, who was a great amateur coach, taught me the fundamentals. He did what he could for me and got me as far as he could. God bless his soul, but he said, Bill would teach you boxing. When you ask anybody in professional boxing in the state of Minnesota or around the country who Bill Kane is, they'll know who the hell he is. My name is Bill Kane. I've been accused of being around boxing for 100 years. Uh, I think the reason for that is my father was a professional boxer, a professional boxing trainer, and I followed in his footsteps, so the name is carried on through the boxing game. You make a miss, you make a pay. But I have been in it for over 60 years. My father wanted me to get an education, did not want me to be a professional boxer. And uh, I found out it's a lot easier 
instructing somebody else. I don't have to take the shots like these guys have to do. Breathe deep, Tony. <sighs> the toughest part about working with Bill, in total honesty, um, I don't really disagree with him much. And if I do, I'll say, Bill, this necessarily didn't work in practice. Can I try something different? And he's pretty open to that. Um, once in a while, you know, I'll say I want to go more rounds. He'll say, nope, you're done. And I got to listen to him. That's what he's there for. He's there to call the shots. Sometimes I want to think I can go more. Sometimes he makes me more, go more, and I don't necessarily want to. One more, and that's all, I promise you. One more. Suck it up. Suck it up. That's probably when I get mad at him the most. But I don't tell him that. It's just inside. You know, when I'm pushing 10 rounds, and he says, you're going one more, OK, I don't say nothing. I just do it, because it's Bill. Nice. You want to go two more? That's enough. That's, oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Man. I'm just kidding you. That's enough. I know you would. I know you would. I don't want you to. I've been diagnosed with spinal stenosis, and uh, it's a degeneration of the spinal the, uh, discs. I had a hard time getting into the ring, and I have trouble moving around. I have difficulty driving, and I don't want to drive too much. I don't want to drive too far. So uh, I meet him in the morning. I drive maybe three, four miles to a meeting place where it's convenient for him. And uh, I'll get in his truck, drives me right to the place, gets the wheelchair out for me, pushes me in the gym. Can't ask for a better life than that. At my age, I, I love something like this because it keeps me going. Uh, I can get up in the morning. I've got something to do. I work with a kid that's very receptive, that wants to be good at what he's doing. And everything that I've been exposed to and, and tried to have learned over the years, I can pass on to him. And, uh, he'll, he'll try it and uh, give it a good shot, you know. So he's, he's been fantastic. And Lisa Bach, who owns Uppercut Gym, is also my trainer. She gets in there, she holds the pads with me, um, makes me go the extra round when I really don't want to, she says, just push it. I assist Bill, so I let him go. He's going, he's the main coach. I listen to him and, um, what what he needs and what he wants from Tony, but also Bill and I talk together throughout the rounds and and so we, to see if we see the same things. Well, she's done a great job. I mean, she gets in there, she yells at me just like everybody else does. One, two, four straight, four straight. I've been with Tony, I think it's seven years now, and um, it's it's getting, you know you get used to a certain pattern in a certain way and how you need to talk to him and what he needs out of it and and so it's it's the corners really come together that way and works really well together i have a great great corner and i'm very happy with the corner i've got i fought matt vanda uh, january 12th and that was a very uh, emotional fight because there was a lot of trash talking a lot of verbal sparring going on before the fight that um, he's about six, eight years younger than I am, and we've been trying to get the fight for about six, seven years, and they wouldn't come anywhere near me. And then when I turned 36, they decided that they might be able to beat me. The outcome was the same as we thought it would be eight years ago. I handily beat him on a unanimous decision. It was a great fight as far as I was concerned. I, I manhandled him for 10 rounds. I probably could have knocked him out, but I wanted to punish him. After all the BS that he said about me and my kids and my wife, I wasn't going to let him off easy by knocking him out and getting him out of there in two rounds. I had him hurt early. I could have taken him out, but I wanted to punish him. And then in the 10th round, I knocked him down. I mean, he could hit me with a baseball bat, and I wasn't going to be affected. Probably the most emotional-filled fight I've ever fought. Probably not my hardest fight ever, but my most emotional-filled fight. And it was very, very gratifying to me after I won. And the new IBA. America's champion, Tony the Bullet Bonsante. Because now not only do I have the, the satisfaction of knowing I beat him, I also have bragging rights in the state of Minnesota that I'm the best middleweight they've got. You know, and I'm probably the oldest middleweight they've got. They wanted Matt Vanda. Irish Ropes wanted Matt Vanda to fight John Duddy. But they said whoever won would get the shot at Duddy. Well, I surprised, obviously, Irish Ropes promotions. And now they're giving me the shot to fight for the world title against John Duddy in Madison Square Garden. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity. And uh, like I said earlier, we're going to shock a lot of people.
Another day at the office. This is where I work. I'm a logistics supervisor for Sears Holding Company at the Kmart Distribution Center in Shockton, Minnesota. Service Kmart retail outlets throughout the Upper Midwest. Uh, I'm a third shift logistics supervisor. Dick Brown, who a good friend of mine, support is funding me through this, so I can still pay my bills, but yeah, you know, box. Hey, Jeff. You want Tony? Good. How are you? All right. Been here about 14 years. It's a great job. They treat me well. They uh, support my boxing, and um, they set a banner up for me and everything on my last fight. This is Pat Stoltz. He's our third shift receiving manager. How are you? Jerry Edwards, he's one of our associates. Donnie, he's our maintenance guy. You know, like, Tony's afraid of me, because he, he can run faster scared than I can mad. And that's why he's so good. Third shift repack, please come to the repack office. Third shift repack, please come to the repack office. This is Nathan Holichke, he's one of our repack associates. Barb, Hi, Tony. this is Barb Devine, she's one of our repack associates as well. Hi. With this group of people, I really don't have to it makes my job very, very easy because I've got five people back here that are great workers. I've got Barb Devine, Bob Beckers, Nathan Litchke, Mark Menden, and Jim Elliott. They all do a great job, um, and I really have no complaints. They make me look better than probably what I really am, but you know, that's good for me anyways. If you guys want me to leave, I can leave. <laughs> oh, no, he's a great boss. It's, he's a whole lot of fun. We all give each other a lot of crap back and forth, and he can take it just as well as he can dish it. Oh, he's a great guy. I used to work with him in loss prevention and all that, too. So, no, he's a real good guy. He's going to win, too. He's really a big softy. Let, opposed to his... Bark. his huh? Opposed to his bark. Yeah, exactly. His bark's a lot worse than his bite. He's I just make sure the work gets done in an orderly fashion, in a productive manner, a safe, efficient manner, and make sure the stuff gets to the yeah. stores as quickly and efficiently and safely as possible. This leave of absence is the best thing in the world. I'm telling you, I've trained my ass off three times a day for at least five hours a day. You'll see. See you guys. A week from Friday, I'll be doing some damage. Yeah, hey, Leon, Barb. Good luck, Tony. Thank you. Now I get to go home. Okay, Tony, let's go. Right now it is 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. We're about halfway through the day, a little more than halfway through the day because um, I've got to do my boxing workout, which is about two hours. Look at Sharp. He's picked up a little speed with the conditioning, added a little speed to him. Tony, close those legs up. You're getting them spread too far. Nice speed. That's what I want to see in those combinations. Wait for that. You're going to have to handle this guy like a rag doll, but you're going to have to be careful so you don't get points taken away, you know. Because there, the referee's going to be watching for everything. But you're going to have to rough this guy up, you know, get nasty with him. Ten more. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Ten. We're seven days out. He's right where he needs to be. He was right on. He was focused. He, he had the hand speed. And when he was hitting the pad, it was nice, solid hits. That's what I like. When he gets to a certain weight, you can tell a pound on him, which is pretty amazing. 163. Honestly, I didn't expect to work this hard today, but they knew I wasn't sparring. Now we're heading home. It's about quarter to four on Friday, a week before the fight. I got to head home. Brittany's at home. Brittany, you're either going to eat what I prepared for dinner or you are not going to DJ night. Bottom line. Think, I don't care if it's fair or not. You're going to do it or you're not going to DJ night. Simple. I don't care. We're having tilapia, that's like walleye. You either eat it or you don't go. All right, bye. Derek will be home at four, and then uh, about five o'clock, I'll head back to Gold's and go running. See you tomorrow, Lise. Take care, Lisa. Right now, it's 10 after five on Friday. 
Um, I just got done with the boxing workout, drive home, I had to stop at home, check on the munchkins, and now I'm going to back to Gold's Gym for my cardio workout, which is my run. I'll run five miles and then I just was informed by my fourth grade son that we might have to go to a Sweeney family fun night, which is from the school. They set up a dance and they have games in the gym at the school, so we may be going to that now. So uh, lots of fun. You just never know what'll happen. We're back at Gold's Gym for my cardio, which is my running. I'll run five miles um, to get ready for the fight. Uh, it started out this morning at the Hyperbaric Chamber in Rogers, and then 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock, we did a personal training with Noe, and then one o'clock to about 3, 3.30, we did the boxing workout at Uppercut, and now we're back at Gold's to do our uh, cardio with the treadmill, so. Tanya, my wife, will be here. She'll meet us. She's actually already here, so I just got to find her. We usually go play hoops, and then we work out. He's probably going to go running for about five miles. So I just do the elliptical. I'm just going to change, and then we'll head home. Where's your stuff? In the locker. OK. Are you going to shower before we go to family? Oh, yeah, I kind of have to. I haven't At showered home. all day. Oh. Did you get that? Now we go pick up Brittany, bring her to DJ night, and then go home, take a quick shower, and go to family fun night with Derek at his school. It's 6 o'clock on Friday, March 9th. Just got done with the last workout of the day. We had to do our cardio. I ran five miles on the treadmill at Gold's Gym. Nine hours later, we're done. Right now is the end of the workout day. Now starts family time. Oh, I finally get to come home. All right, well, Derek, make up your mind if you want to go dance or... Yeah, are you going to DJ? Are you going to the dance or not? No, nope. for sure. Can you tell me why you don't want to go? Um, because <laughs> I don't want to. Okay, that's fine. Do you, are you embarrassed of how your dad dances? <laughs> oh, God, no, no, no. no. There's the dance. <laughs> come on, dude, that's how we dance. He dances kind of funny. <laughs> It's just like a little, there's a DJ and he plays a bunch of songs. And then my mom and dad used to pick me up at 9.30, but I'm going to sleep over at a friend's house. Derek, you need shoes. We're going. I can't find some. You need socks. I'm getting them. I'm getting them. Hey, Dad, can you lend me a couple bucks, please? I got five bucks. Yeah, that's enough, ain't it? You got to get in. Look at your store. All right, fine. I got money in the wallet. You need socks. Yeah, uh, didn't I just pay for something? I gave you 10 bucks for something. Is that gone already? I gave a quarter too. I a quarter. Yeah, I know. Because I lost it. Come on, let's go. We are going to DJ night to drop my daughter off. It's a team center where they have a DJ come and play top 40 music. And then uh, we're going out to dinner. Hi. To our favorite restaurant, Turtles, Turtles. Bar and Grill and Shock. <laughs> oh, okay. That's it. That's All what right. we're doing. Right. And then home for R&R. &R. That's a day in the life of a professional boxer. <laughs> Ten seconds to go. Go, 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 go! John Duddy is, uh, he's about 5'11", a very powerful guy, strong. He's 18 and 0. He's got 15 knockouts, I think nine of which come in the first round. Ireland! got the belt, he just beat Yori Boy Campus, and I know deep down in my heart he's in for a war. You might as well put this fight in a phone booth because I'm not going to back down from anything. I'm going to stand there, I'm going to take his shots, but I'm going to give him right back. That's it. Side to side. I'm sparring with a better opponent than I'm going to be fighting, in, as far as I'm concerned. Willie Gibbs is from Philly. He's about 5'11", strong guy, quick guy, faster guy, and in my estimations, is better than Duddy. So if I can catch him in the ring, I should be able to catch Duddy. Because this guy's quick. He hits like a hammer, and he's quick. You're done. You're all through. That's it for the day. Just went 10 rounds with Willie. That'll be the last time I go 10. It was a great workout. He pushed me hard today. We're six days away from the fight. 
Just went 10 rounds with the champ. I feel great. Feel great. Training camp's been good. We're ready for Duddy. We're going to tear him up. If he moves his head and throws his combinations like he was doing, he picked up his combinations and he picked up his jab, jab into it. You know, so that that turnaround, that 50%, gave him, a, I, I think, um, edge over Duddy. Oh, there's no way Duddy's as fast as this kid. And he don't have the movement. Duddy comes straight in. It's a little change in plans for me. I wouldn't work him this hard, this close, but Willie is leaving tomorrow. So I have to take what I've got here and try to piece it together the best I can. He looks good. Uh, Bill surprised him with 10 rounds. Um, he thought he was going to go probably eight. So he got 10 in. I'm not sure how many he's going to go tomorrow, and then that's it for sparring. He's strong, and that's the, that's the secret. He's <laughs> strong. You believe me. Thank you for everything. Hey. Listen, I really owe you a lot. Hey, you, uh, you're tremendous. Just win that fight. That, oh, makes me, that makes me feel good well, like well, I did well, my job. Oh, you did your job. Yeah, We're going to win it for you. We're going to win it for you. I know. I'm going to be there. We're going to win that good. Well, they said they sold out three weeks before the fights. Well, today will be a very light workout. We're in the tapering down stage now. What you have to do, you bring him up to a point where he has to reach his maximum on Saturday night. I've hopefully done that, and right now it's keeping him sharp and keeping the right mental attitude with him. He's a help. He's as ready as he'll ever be. Two more. One, two. Double jab cross. Good. Right elbow. Come at me. Good. Do it again. Four straight. Went well. We went. Three on the pads, three on the heavy bay. Now I'm gonna jump rope for 15 minutes, and then it's a day, and then we fly to New York tomorrow. We'll have one more workout in New York. We'll uh, probably work out at Gleason's, Lisa. Is that our Is plan, that, you know? That's, well, that's Duddy's gym, so I don't know. Uh... Yeah, we were talking about it on the way down here, and uh, he doesn't care, and I don't, we got nothing to disclose now. You know, what are they gonna pick up now? Yeah, it can be Gleason's or, you know, there's Trinity, Trinity Gym, <clears throat> excuse me, Wall Street, and then uh, the Church Street Gym, which actually I've never been there, so you have your choice. You know, I'm packing up the last time. This is the last workout we have at Uppercut. We leave tomorrow for New York at 10.30, and, um, and it's go time. I've done everything I possibly can do to get ready. I'm in the best physical condition I can possibly be in, and I was telling Dick, Lisa and Bill, I haven't been in this good shape since I was 21 years old. I'm 36 now. There's no way this kid can beat me. There's just no way this kid will beat me. I will yeah. come back with two world title You're belts on, huh? around my waist. Yeah. That's the last time. Say goodbye to Minneapolis. Say hello to New York. We are downtown New York. It's two days before the fight. We're just gonna go walking around. We got a press conference today at 12.30. Yeah, this is where the uh, press conference is. Hi, you guys have a press conference at 12.30, right? Is it all upstairs or some of it upstairs, some of it downstairs, uh, you know? Well, no, this is gonna be a buffet downstairs, but everything else will be going on upstairs. Okay, because I, my trainer, I'm Anthony Bonsante, by the way. Um, we, uh, have, my trainer is in a wheelchair. Is that going to be, is there any way to get him up there besides the stairs? Or does he take the stairs? No, I'm going to go the way up there. Okay, that's fine. They said everything was going to be upstairs, so we're just going to have to get here a little early so you can make it up the steps so they don't have an elevator or anything. I'll make it up. So, if I were you guys, I'd leave a little early so you can get up the steps and get here in time so you can get a good seat. All right, we'll see you over here then. All right, see you guys. Okay. I'd like to introduce, uh, from Minnesota, uh, a good guy, a tough fighter, and he's, he's coming here to win, baby. He's coming here to win, there's no doubt about it, Anthony Bonsante. It's going to be a great fight. Like Bob says, neither one of us are going to have to find each other. We're going to be standing right there. So I look for a great fight out of John, as does he look for one out of me, and I hope to give the fans what they came for. And I'm excited to be here. I've got my wife and my two kids here. Actually, they're out doing some touristing right now, but... Um, I told him I wasn't going to have any fun till after the fight. And then St. Patrick's Day is when I'll have some fun. I know even though I'm not Irish, I can still have fun on St. Patrick's Day. So 
Um, thanks everybody for coming and I promise to put on a great fight. You have to take your hat off to the man, he's a true meaning of a hungry fighter. Yeah. And, I, and I know I'm going to be getting the best of uh, Anthony Basante on uh, Friday night. Did you